Hey y'all, this is Zach with the Jones House. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a little more advanced method of playing. So you've got, you know, you're, you're in tune, you're in time, you've got all your basic um, scales under your fingers, and now you just want to start jazzing up your own playing and making bass a little more interesting for you uh, during the jam. And I think a I think a great way to do that is using leading notes and leading notes are just the notes that you play in between chord changes um, and the possibilities are endless but we'll cover several basic ones today and then turn you loose to create your own but um, you know the purpose of a leading note is to let everybody in the band know that, hey, the chord's fixing to change. And I think the most basic version of that is just the double tap uh, method, which is just hitting the root note twice before the chord changes. So let's see, we'll use G for this example. So what that would look like would be See, so I was just hitting the root note twice and that told everybody that I was playing with who like maybe they didn't know the song as well as I did that the chord was about to change. And you can see that on any old recordings, you know. I know for me, I hear that a lot on old Flatt and Scruggs uh, recordings. But it's a it's an easy way and I, I still use it in my playing and it, it really is so easy. So the next one would be um, just a walk up using the notes in your scale, right? So in G, we have, we have all those notes. And so if I'm trying to get to C, I will go. See, and I just used everything in my G scale and I got around to my G chord, my C chord, and my D chord. And, you know, if, if you did this every time, it would, it would seem a little excessive. And so that's really your next step is learning when to use, when to use a walk up and when to use the double tap, um, and and just to make your playing a little more tasteful. So like combining the two, what would that sound like? It'd be. So I, I used a variation of all of those. Um, throughout that uh, phrase, right? And I used I used the double tap and then when, when it was uh, going from the D back to the G, you know, to restart, I was like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a little extra to let the people I'm playing with know that um, the song is turning around and starting over. And I, I like to do leading notes a lot like that because like I said if I was just going it just sounds a little a little rigid and uh and and if you're playing with a full band you know uh if if you if you don't know what the bass is doing that means the bass player is probably pretty good because you really just want to mesh with the band and be in the background and lift everyone that you're playing with up. So a few more that uh, we can just touch on would be um, a little bit more saucy. 
I guess you could say, and, and you could use some of the flats that aren't necessarily in the key that you're playing, but they go to a note that is in that key. So what would that sound like? That would, we could do B flat and an F. So what, we'll use that. So what I did there was use, rather than use the G, A, B natural, C, rather than using that A, I went up a half step and used that B flat. And now I gotta get back to the G, so I will use the F natural, F sharp to get back to the G. And, you know, this is again something that I wouldn't use every single time because it would just sound out of place. But say we get say we get to the end of the song again. And and it tells people that okay, the song is starting over again. Um one last one that I will that I will leave you with would be just your standard um, walking bass line, right? And so that is made up at, if we're thinking in numbers, that's made up of the one, the root, the three, the five, the six, and then the uh, one again. So. And that, that's in G. And so how I would use that in um, my passing notes would sound something like this. there you have it and and there at the end you will realize that I use that flat uh, to get down to the D so you and that's the thing you can use any and all of these methods together to create really interesting bass lines for yourself and for the people listening and playing with you but it's definitely important to not overdo it. And that's okay if you do, but uh, you might you might get a, a little kick in the leg there by the guitar player or something. But, um, but yeah, I hope this helps you. And um, yeah, feel free to shoot me an email or drop me a line if you have any questions. Thanks.